Hello! Welcome to the Integral Calculus video for five different types of Riemann sums. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. The learning objectives for this video are, by the end of this video, you should be able to compute a Riemann sum in five ways. Our motivation is we want to see how do Riemann sums differ when using different types of sample points. So for example, taking all the right endpoints or the left endpoints, the midpoints, taking the upper sums or the lower sums. We're going to look at those five different ways. And specifically, we're going to look at the function f of x is sine x on the interval 0 to pi using four equally spaced intervals. So that stuff will stay the same, but we'll change what endpoints we take and what sample points we take. All right, so let's start off with just the function itself and the stuff that won't change. So we're using sine x. The interval is 0 to pi and there are four subintervals. So one thing we can compute right away is what will be the width of the rectangles. So we can use a formula from the textbook, which is really just take the full width and divide it into four parts, since we're using four uh, subintervals. And if you do this, you get pi over four. So each um, subinterval will have length pi over four. So if we break it up into four parts, each of these parts will have the same width, delta x, which is pi over 4. Using this, we can work our way from the left over to figure out what are these x values. So the first one, you add pi over 4, and then you add another pi over 4, and then you add another pi over 4, and then you add another pi over 4. So there we go. Those are the x values of the subintervals. Now our rectangle will have base this, or this, or this, or this, and we're gonna have to figure out what the heights should be of these rectangles. Let's start off with picking the right endpoints. So on this interval, we take this endpoint, so we get a height all the way up here on, on the function. On the second interval, we go up to the right endpoint and its value. Third interval, we go up here, and the fourth interval, we go up to the function, but the function is just zero. So let's see what these rectangles look like. So we have one, two, three, and a fourth rectangle, which is very flat. The height is zero. This is what happens if on every interval, we take the right endpoint to be the height. Sometimes it's an overestimate, and sometimes it's an underestimate, as in this case, in this case. Now let's figure out the total area. We know the widths already, this is delta x, and for each of them, we'll have to write down what the height is. So for the first one, the width is pi over four, and the height is pi over four, and then you plug it into sine. So the height is sine pi over four. Here the height is sine pi over two, here the height is sine pi, three pi over four, and here the height is sine of pi, which is zero. So these are four areas. Figuring out what they actually are, we get this, and this is approximately 1.896. So this is using the right endpoint rule. Now let's use the left endpoint rule. Again, we start with the same uh, function and the same partition. Now for each interval, we look at the left endpoint. So on this interval, we take this endpoint. On this interval, we take this endpoint and plug it into the function. Here we plug in this value to get this. And in this fourth interval, we plug in 3 pi over 4 to get this height. So here's what the rectangles look like. Now we can figure out the areas of these. Again, the bases are all the same, still pi over 4. And the heights are sine 0, sine pi over 4, sine pi over 2, sine 3 pi over 4. So there they are. Plugging them all in, we get this value which is approximately 1.896. All right, now let's move on to the midpoint rule. So this time, for each interval, we're going to take the y value that occurs at the x value in the middle of the interval. So we'll look at pi over 8, 3 pi over 8, 5 pi over 8, and 7 pi over 8, because these are the midpoints of those four intervals. So there's the y values at those points. 
So what do the rectangles look like? Well, here we have the same, the same base for our rectangle. And the height is right here. Height is right here. Height is right here. Height is right here. So now we need to find the areas of these four. Again, sorry, the areas of these four. Again, the widths are all the same. They're all pi over four. But the heights are now sine pi over eight, sine three pi over eight, sine five pi over eight, and sine seven pi over eight. Here they are. Width times height, width times height, width times height, width times height. So if you plug these into your calculator, you'll get approximately 2.052. All right, so now let's look at the upper sum. So for this one, on each interval, you look at what's the highest y value I can take, and then that will be your height of your rectangle. So on this interval, the highest point is right here. On this interval, the highest point is right here. On this interval, the highest point is right here. And on this interval, the highest point is right here. So the rectangle should cover the function. It's going to be an overestimate. That's what upper sums do. Okay, so what's the height of this rectangle? The height is sine pi over four. The height of this one is sine pi over two. The height of this one is again sine pi over two. And the height of this one is sine three pi over four. So there's our area. Plugging this into your calculator, you get approximately 2.682. All right, now let's do the lower sum, which underestimates everything. So for the lower sum, on each interval, we take the lowest y value. So in this one, the lowest y value is zero. In this one, the lowest y value is uh, this y value right here. On this interval, the lowest y value is this one. And on this interval, the lowest y value is this. So what do our rectangles look like? So we have these two flat rectangles because the lowest height is zero. And on these intervals, here's our lowest height. Let's compute the areas here. So here the height is sine zero. Here the height is sine pi over four. Here this height is sine three pi over four. And here the height is sine pi. Plugging this into our calculator, we get it's approximately 1.111. All right, let's gather all of our data. So the left sum gave us 1.896. The right sum was also 1.896. The midpoint rule gave us 2.052. The upper sum gave us 2.682. The lower sum gave us 1.111. And the true value, using knowledge that we'll learn later in the course, is two. So some of these were quite close. The left, right, and midpoint rule were fairly close. The upper estimate was off by about 0.7, and the lower estimate was off by about 0.9. All pretty good, though. Let's end with some exercises. Find the five Riemann sums for the function f of x equals x squared on the interval minus 1 to 1 using n equals 4 rectangles. If you know how to code, write a program that automatically computes these five Riemann sums for f of x equals sine of x and any number of rectangles. Let's take a moment to reflect. In the example, the left endpoint sum and the right endpoint sum were equal, were they? Uh, why is that? Will that happen for every function f of x, or is sine x special in some way? Was the midpoint rule an overestimate or an underestimate in this case? Thank you very much, and have a great day.